Hi everyone, thank you for watching. I am going to do the Queen's Gambit makeup today or kind of my take on that because I love that period of makeup. Just super kind of like elegant and feminine and that big winged black eyeliner. I think it's so pretty and someone asked me to do a tutorial on it. So this is my take on it. I'm as not a professional makeup artist. I am the founder of Dolls Custom Cosmetics. So I love cosmetics. I love playing around with them, creating different looks. So if you have ways of doing this as well, let me know. So there are kind of different looks in the Queen's Gambit when it comes to her makeup. It starts off very, very light and easy. And then as it progresses, it kind of gets you get the dark eyeliner underneath as well. And then right at the end, it's that really gorgeous, elegant look with the black wing eyeliner, no eyeliner on the bottom and that red lip. So that's what I'm gonna do today. You know, it's the last scene, which is in that white outfit with the beret walking through the park. And it's just so, so pretty. Um, also, if you wanna drop me in the comments, other looks you want to see. And if you prefer these silent with kind of just caption overlays and music, let me know as well. I wanna make these something that you want to watch and that you enjoy and you get the most out of. So just kind of let me know and I will work on doing that for you. So the one I'm using at the moment is Bare Minerals. This is Natural 11. I'm gonna use that as my base, but you do you, they have, well, she had very, very pale skin in the Queen's Gambit and it was kind of the era where it wasn't so in fashion to be so tanned. Now everyone has different ways of putting on foundation. I like to use my fingers because I find it blends into my skin better because it's more at room temperature. And then I use the Beauty Blender to get it all nicely blended in. I'm not gonna go too far down my chin because I have a high neck and I don't really want makeup all over my black top. So there's different ways, this is already pre wet and um, using the Beauty Blender you can dab or you can roll. I kind of like to use a bit of both really just to blend the foundation right into the skin. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of concealer just to hide some dark circles and to highlight the cupid's bow a bit more. I'm gonna contour the cupid's bow because she's got that really prominent lip shape and it's just so, so pretty. So, I'm not a big fan of this concealer, so don't even have to worry about the concealer I'm using if you've got a good one. I'm gonna come back in and fix that. I'm gonna contour first and then come back in and really get going with that contour. I'm not gonna blend that too much because I want it to pop. My hair looks really dark right now because it's actually wet. I'm gonna do it afterwards. I'm gonna do a little bit of contouring, but it's slightly different with the contour because it's not that really, really narrow nose and that harsh line. It's more just kind of that gentle, follow your natural shape face. I'm using a fake bake um, because it's not too metallic. I'm just gonna get right up in there. I'm not gonna do the hairline either like I normally would. I would normally, my everyday look, I kind of like to do the whole way around for this. Just gonna do kind of a wider, more natural look and not go too far down. If you go too far down, Depending on your face shape, it can be very, very narrowing. The faces we pull when we do makeup. <laughs> but this is where I want to contour, and this is where I want to do the cupids of bow. So I'm gonna use a mirror so I can see a little bit closer to me. Right now I'm like a crazy person with a moustache. <laughs> and then we're just gonna blend that in. So I'm kind of contouring the nose, but normally I would come really, really far in. And this, I'm just gonna leave a little bit wider. You can contour however you want to contour. If you've got a specific look you're going for with your face. Like makeup, I feel is something very personal when you're trying to get it you want to look your best. If you've got a little narrow brush to do this with, it would make it a lot easier. I'm just gonna build up the layers until I get it exactly how I want it. I think it's popping more in the camera than it is 
in person because I have a ring light blasting on my face. So I'm gonna keep building up the layers. I want to do the blush next. And I have a very natural colored blush. I'm using this one, it's Kat Von D Crush. Um, crush on blush. And I just think it's a really, really pretty everyday color and it's matte. Her matte, her look was very, very matte. Well, I'm personally not going to highlight for this look, but you can highlight if you prefer that look. And this is when we're really gonna blend that contour in. Don't be worried about get blending too hard and taking too much off, because you can always layer it back on. Okay, a little bit of setting powder under the eyes now, because I want to do the eyes next. And I like to tap the excess off so I'm not completely caking. And then press it in, which is also gonna help set that concealer. But leave the excess there so you can brush off any fallout. And the eyes are very, very pale, very matte. So I'm actually using Kat Von D's Neutral Palette. Um, I'm gonna go with a very, very light, creamy color. You could go even lighter. Just get that really nice, pale base that was so kind of like, the really pale eye was really, really popular in this era. Even my cat grades. So a lot of this look is very similar to the Bridgerton era to start with, with that matte, with the neutral tones. Um, and not too much contouring. The difference with this is really getting into that winged eyeliner, lots of mascara and the big bushy eyebrows. My cat is now deciding he wants to join in. And now we're gonna go in and I'm just gonna do a little bit in the crease and not too much just to give it some shape. And again, with a very, very neutral brownie beige, I'm gonna kind of work with these two colors to really get that natural look in there. I like to kind of leave everything out as I'm going along because sometimes I'll go back and forth and fix things as we go. So I'm just gonna start really, really gradually right in that socket and I'm not really gonna wing the eye makeup too much because I want to wing the liner and really it's just to give a really really gentle wash of color nothing crazy but I just don't want white hand your eyes and then just really really blended look for this look you don't want any harsh lines I don't really want harsh lines and makeup normally, but let's get some brows going. And I'm gonna use, I have Anastasia, or Anastasia, how do you want to say a brow or whiz? I really, really like this. Um, it's a retractable pencil and you can really, really build the color really nicely and evenly. And mine are quite thin, my eyebrows, so I'm gonna have to do a little cheating to make them bigger and bushier to get her look. So what I did was, I started by filling in the bottom and the top of the brows to kind of the width I wanted them to be. And then I'm gonna shade in because I don't have much brow density to give it that color underneath. Because if I just draw brows upright, I'm gonna look like I've got really sparse eyebrows. And then start filling in some hair strokes. and then brushing them upwards. So you create some texture right there. And it can feel a bit strange if you haven't got much eyebrows to suddenly have these big brushy brows. Once you put the eyeliner on and the lashes, it's gonna really look like that Queen's Gambit look, like exactly how it's supposed to be. I brought the camera in a little bit more so you could see a little bit closer everything I was doing. And then just kind of, if you wanna make sure they're nice, and even you can kind of do that as well. So I like to kind of make sure that the two arches are matching up to the top. And you want to keep this shape very, very natural because they weren't really, this was before kind of the over plucking and the Botox and everything else and creating those sharper shapes. Okay. And once your brows are done, I'm gonna move on to the eyeliner and mascara. So there's a couple of different things you can do because she does different looks as she goes. So one is the half wing, which starts here and goes all the way out. She's got some where she has the black eyeliner underneath, somewhere where it's really low underneath, which is a little bit crazy and a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, and then, so I'm gonna start just with the eyeliner on the top. And then what you can do to take the look from day to night is do the eyeliner underneath as well. So if you were gonna do just the eyeshadow underneath, I would just use the same color and use a brush like this and then just take it underneath. And I'm not going to do that because I wanna keep mine fresh and open for the daytime. And then I would use 
a pencil I'm like this one by Charlotte Tilbury it's rock and cone I used it for the Bridgerton look as well because I think it just creates a really nice wide open look and if you've got any redness to the inside eye it's really gonna help get rid of that okay I'm gonna do a little bit of powder just before I move on to the eyes this is going to keep getting more and more blended as we go. I'm still leaving the powder under the eyes just in case I have an accident with the mascara or the <laughs> eyeliner. Now, so there's different ways to do this. I like to do my mascara before my liner because I feel like it gives me a stronger base. My eyelashes hold it better than them being really, really soft when the eyeliner is going across. So I feel like I get a better line when I do that. Um, I'm going to use the Subversion by Urban Decay, the Lash Primer, just to really create some lash volume. I'm going to use fake eyelashes as well because I just like lashes. And I think when you're not doing the bottom, it's quite nice to have that really popped look. I didn't go too dark with the eyeshadow again because doing a red lip, um, this is a day, and I think it's nice to have one or the other, not necessarily both and it was such a classic look just that black eyeliner and the red lips i tend to pick my eyes up when i do that if you're wondering what i'm doing because i find i can get to the roots better with the mascara so next up i'm going to do the eyeliner so there's different ones i like to do this again the anastasia is really really nice it's got a really nice thin point oh my god i can't even get a lid off <laughs> Maybe because it's a screw. Really, really fine top, which is really nice to work with. And then what I'm gonna use for the side is Kat Von D's dagger because, try and get that close to you, it has that point to it. So it's got a really, really good shape to be able to get that wing on there really, really nicely. In fact, I don't even know if I'm gonna use the Anastasia today. I'm just gonna go in with the dagger since we're gonna start on the outer corner. So one of the tips I learned, I was 11 when I started doing my eye makeup for stage as a ballerina, and that was to rest the finger here. So you've got a really, really nice stable way of doing your eyeliner rather than trying to hold it up here and balance. It's gonna really gonna help if you've got this or something head there just to really help you stabilize. And I like to look and see where that one is level in here and then try and match up the outside corner and then draw it in to match. I like to let everything dry before I do my lashes so that they've got a really good base to stick to, whether I'm doing strip lashes or whether I'm doing the magnetic ones, which I'm gonna to do today. So before I do that, I'm gonna do my lipstick, lashes, spray, done, and then finish my hair, obviously, for the complete look. But um, I'm just gonna use a red lip liner. With red lipstick, I'd always say use a liner just to really keep it in place so it doesn't bleed everywhere. Oh, storage tip for your eyeliners, this one, your liquid eyeliners. Always make sure you store them with the nib to the bottom so that the flow of the ink can keep going in there. If you store it the other way up, they tend to be dry and then you have to wait for it to go down to be able to apply it. So little storage tip if you want to store them the right way up. Okay, and we're gonna really, really try and create that cupid bow shape for this. She has literally the most perfect lip shape. And it's up to you whether you want to apply it straight on or if you prefer to use a lipstick brush, it's just some personal preference. You can use a finger to dab it on. I'm just gonna apply this straight on. And I tend to flip it to use the pointy side to get it really, really precise when I'm going in there. And this is Dawes Custom Cosmetics. It's the little mini one. Um, it's part of the Emily in Paris collection or it's called Seduction if you want that color. And also the Valentine Red Lip Liner. You can just get those on Walmart. All right, I always feel like it's missing something when it's missing the, the lashes because it just really completes the look and I feel like I'm gonna use my face completely differently when I have lashes on. Okay, so bear with me. Um, the, the 
False eyelashes can be a little bit tricky to get to a grips with. And without a mirror, I'm just literally using my phone here. And the lashes I chose for this have a really winged kind of tapered look. Because again, that was very much the style. Kind of complements the winged eyeliner. Okay, that is about it for this look. I'm gonna go finish my hair and be back with the finished look.